this is Anu and welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy you could join me today for yet but another tutorial and I am so excited to show you today what I created. I've been wearing it for the last week almost every day. I can't not part with it. Next week it's going to be really cold so so first of all, I love the shape of it. I don't know if you remember, but a few years ago there was a hype over a sweater. It was called the Bernadette. And you know, it's a super expensive sweater. I don't know exactly why $500 for a sweater, which I would never ever pay, but I loved the shape. I thought it was such a cool uh, vest. And here is a picture of the Bernadette. It is not crochet, it's knitted. And I figured, I wanted to recreate it for people like me that like crochet better than knitting or as much but anyway I wanted to give people that crochet a chance to be able to create something as pretty as the Bernadette. So this is what I did and here is the sweater. The yarn that I chose is one of the yarn that I talked about in my Michael's unboxing slash haul that I did last week and it's the Karen Latte Cake in I think the color is red macaroon but I will put all the information in the info box below about this specific yarn it is not expensive I used two skins for this sweater so very affordable and I cannot find one thing that I don't like about this Bernadette-ish vest um, first of all it's super easy to make I use double crochet and half double crochet, a little bit of chaining, increasing and decreasing. As usual, I will take you through it slowly but surely. The vest is uh, created from the back up. This vest is super easy to make. It has one, two and then the sleeve. So two pieces and then the sleeve and you assemble it as you want, either with a tapestry needle or or like me with your crochet hook. Um, this size is small medium, but as usual, other sizes will be on my blog. I will put the address right there of my blog. I love the sleeve. The sleeve I think makes a lot of this sweater because they're poofy and then they narrow really down at the wrist and it gives that Bernadette style vest that little oomph. And then the Karen Latte cake is so soft. It looks like mohair but it's not. For example, you know, little things getting into your nose or being really, really hard to unravel, to frog like we say in the crochet world. Um, but this is super easy to unravel if you make a mistake and it's super easy to crochet. So in love with this new yarn for Karen. Good job Karen. If you are not subscribed to my crochet channel don't hesitate to do so. It is absolutely free. Click on the subscribe button. Don't hesitate also to click on that little bell if you want to be notified every time I post something new. I post about once a week and also come and visit me on my social media just to say hi and to hang out some more more than just that once a week on YouTube. Congratulations to the winner of the last tutorial. It was my Mobius scarf slash headscarf um, tutorial. I'll put a link right there if you want to check it out. But here is the name of the winner. I will send you your skin of what was it? Loops and thread chameleon yarn to create that in the beautiful uh, blueberry or I think that was the color, but that will go your way. Please make sure to go to my email address. This is right here and send me your physical address so I can send you your yarn. So if you are interested in knowing how to crochet this beautiful Bernadette style vest, then keep on watching. And in the meantime, happy crochet and see you next time. Bye. You will need two skins of yarn from the brand Kara Latte Cake in Red Macaroon. You will also need some scissors and a tapestry needle. You will also need three crochet hooks, one six and a half millimeters, one eight millimeters, and one ten millimeters. Take your eight millimeter crochet hook and make a slip knot. And then you're going to proceed by chaining 46. And that will be your base chain and we are creating your back. Once you have 46 chains, you're going to add three chains and you're going to make a double crochet in the fourth chain from your hook. So the three first chains are going to count as your first double crochet. 
and then you are going to pick up each and every chain and make a double crochet in it. So at the end of your first row you should have 46 double crochets. I'm going to meet you at the end of this first row once you have 46 double crochets. And this is what your work will look like after your first row. Look how beautiful and soft. I love this yarn. All right, we are going to continue with the border and you are going to chain three and turn your work around and let's do the second row which will be more of the same. So you're going to pick up double crochets all along your second row and I will meet you at the end of your second row. Alright, we are done with our second row. This is what your work will look like. And we are done with the border. Two rows of double crochet. And for your third row, you are going to switch from the 8mm crochet to the 10mm one. A little thicker. For row 3, you are going to chain 1 and turn your work around using that 10 millimeter crochet hook and you're going to make a half double crochet in the first stitch and in the second half double crochet as well and in the third stitch you're going to make a half double crochet as well in that fourth stitch you're going to increase by making two half double crochets in that same fourth stitch and repeat in the next three stitches, you're going to make a half double crochet. And in the fourth stitch, you're going to make two half double crochets in that same stitch, therefore increasing each time by a stitch. And that is what you're going to do all along your third row. And at the end of your third row, you will have 57 stitches in total. Make sure to finish your row making a half double crochet in the last stitch. And this is what your work will look like at the end of your third row. Chain one, turn your work around and let's do the fourth row. And for your fourth row, you are going to just make half double crochets all along. And here you see how we increased and you want that little slanted side from uh, the border to the main part of your back to give that Bernadette style sweater the little puffy round shape that we want. And for the fifth row we're going to do a row of increase again and we are going to make a half double crochet in the next four in the first four stitches and then we're going to make two half double crochet in the fifth and that is what we're going to repeat all along your fifth row. At the end of your fifth row you will have 68 stitches in total. So this is what your work will look like at the end of your fifth row. Let's finish this row.
After your increase, you will have two more stitches. Here is the last increase, and then two more half double crochets, and you are done with your fifth row. So you have 68 stitches, and now what you're going to do from your sixth row, for 40 rows in total, is just continuing back and forth, back and forth. We have enough increase now. We are going to continue with these 68 stitches to make rows and rows and rows of half double crochet, therefore creating your back. And I will meet you at your row 40. Back and forth, back and forth, half double crochet, and I will meet you once your back looks a little bit like this. So super easy, guys. And look how beautiful the colors are. It's a little bit of a different gradient colors going from the pumpkin color to the beige color through some brown. Absolutely love it. And I love crocheting with this yarn, which is soft, slides right onto your crochet hook, but not too much. And I was nervous that the mohair style was going to itch my nose or plush, but not at all. In love with this yarn. Okay, so here we are at the 40th row. Again, the beauty with this vest, this Bernadette style vest, is that the back and the front are really easy. You're just creating the shoulders right now and I'll show you exactly how. Now let's create the front panel and the shoulders. No need to fasten off. You are at your 41st row. Alright, so for your 41st row you're going to chain and you're going to turn your work around and you're going to make 29 half double crochets. And I will meet you at the end of your 41st row. And now super easy for the rest of your front panel, you're going to do more of the same. So 29 half double crochets from a row 42 to row 72. And I will meet you at the end of your row 72. Of back and forth, 29 half double crochet, chain one, turn over and over again. Let's meet at the end of row 72. This is what your work will look like. We're done with the back now and almost done with the front panel. Now at your row 73, you're going to switch again from the 10 millimeter crochet hook to the eight millimeter one. Chain one, turn your work around. And for the 73rd row, we are going to do a row of decrease. So you're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work around. You're going to make a half double crochet in the first stitch. And then I'm going to show you how to do it in the second stitch, actually making, turning the second and the third stitch into one stitch by decreasing. So it's half double crochet, two together. Yarn over, pass your crochet hook through the stitch, yarn over and back. You have three loops on your crochet hook and then you're going to repeat in the next stitch, yarn over, pass your crochet hook through the stitch, yarn over and back. Now you will have five loops on your crochet hook and you're going to yarn over and through all the loops on your crochet hook and just like that you decreased half double crochet two together. What you are going to do for the rest of this row is just making two half double crochets, so a half double crochet in the next two stitches and then decreasing turning the two next one into one and you're going to do that all along. Wow, my stomach is making noises, I'm really hungry. You're going to do that all along that uh, 73rd row. At the end of your 73rd row, you should have 22 stitches left. And for row 74, chain one, turn your work around and make a half double crochet in each of those 20 second stitches you had left. I will meet you at the end of your row 74. Ta-da! 
time to make the border for the front panel and for that for row 75 you're going to chain three turn your work around and you're going to make one double crochet all along your 75th row I'll meet you at the end of that 75th row this is what your work will look like and for your 76th row you're going to chain three turn your work around and again make a row of double crochet. I will meet you at the end of your 76th row. And at the end of your 76th row, you will fasten off. You are done with one of your front panels. Okay, so you are done with one panel. And for the second panel, you're going to repeat exactly the same thing, but you are going to leave 10 stitches in the middle untouched and that will create the collar. So you're going to place your work in front of you the side panel that you finish is on your right the right side of your work is facing you and you're going to count 10 stitches from the last stitch from the front panel and in the 11th you're going to pass your crochet hook which is the 10 millimeter crochet hook and you're going to join it with your yarn and you're going to work on the 29 stitches on the other side of the panel and you're going to repeat row 41 to 76 and I will meet you at the end of your row 76 when you're done with both of your front panels. All right, so this is what your work will look like. You are done with the back and the front panels. Now we're going to create the border that will be in front on the side of your front panel in the middle of both of your front panels, which will create the border and the color at the same time. So you're placing your work in front of you and this is exactly where we're going to work in the front with the front side of your work facing you and you're going to join right there with your eight millimeter crochet hook. Join with your yarn and chain one and in that same stitch you're going to make a single crochet and then you're going to pick up stitches all along the side of your front panel going up towards the collar and you're going to pick up one single crochet per row. The most important part is to have the same amount of stitches on one side of the front panel than on the other side to be symmetrical. So here I am picking up single crochets going up towards the collar from the bottom. Now I'm going to go all the way up until I reach the stitches from the collar. All right, so you remember we had left those 10 stitches untouched at the collar and you are going to pick up your single crochets until you reach those 10 stitches and once you reach them you're going to chain one and turn around and go back down for your second row of single crochet then when you reach the bottom you're going to turn your work around chain one and go up and then what you're going to do is fasten off so you will have three rows of single crochet, you will fasten off and you will continue on the other side. So do exactly the same thing, go to the other side of your work, pick up the stitches here, go up until you reach the collar and when you reach that last stitch of the side before the first of the 10 stitch you left untouched, chain one, turn your work around, go back down, chain one, turn your work around and go back up. This time you will not fasten off, you will pick up the 10 stitches going to the other side. All along your collar you will pick up you will pick up single crochets, 10 of them. And then when you reach the other side, the last stitch of the three rows of single crochet you had done, you're going to slip stitch with the top of that, the last of that stitch. And then you're going to fasten off and just like that, you created your front side panel border and the color at the same time. Super easy, right? And now time for the sleeves. 
and you will take two stitch markers and place them strategically on the side of your work to create the sleeve. I will tell you exactly how many rows to count from the bottom part of your front panel up to place the stitch marker and from the bottom part of your back up and placing the stitch marker on the side so your work will have nice large puffy sleeves. Place your work uh, right side facing you and count from the bottom of one of the side panel, the front side panel, 22 rows from uh, the second row of double crochet. So those two rows not included, 22 rows, and with the double crochet rows that would make 24 rows, okay? So you count 22 or 24 rows, depending if you count the double crochet, and you put a stitch marker. That is the bottom of your sleeve from the front panel side. Now turn your work around and you will count rows from the bottom of your back. This time it will not be the same amount. So counting from the back, from the bottom of the back of your work, not including the two rows of double crochet, you will count 24 rows. So with the two rows of double crochet, you will count 26 and then you will place your stitch marker. And why do you have more rows in the back than in the front? It's just because you're creating the shoulder and the collar in one piece. So those, the space that rolls over your shoulder takes about the space of two rows, if that makes any sense. Or else the front will be longer than the back and that's not what you want. Anyway, so then you have placed your stitch marker, all right, 22 rows in the front, 22 four in the back, counting from the bottom. And in between those two stitch marker is where you're going to create your sleeve. And that is the only space you're going to work on right now. All right, so time to do the sleeves now. You're going to grab your eight millimeter crochet hook and you are going to pass it through the stitch where you had put the stitch marker and take your yarn and join and chain one. And in that same stitch, you are going to make a half double crochet. And now you're going to half double crochet your way to the other stitch marker. I picked up 44 stitches in total. The most important thing is to pick up the same amount of stitch on one sleeve than on the other sleeve on the opposite side. That's what matters the most. Okay, so I have 44 stitches going from one stitch marker to the next, picking up half double crochets on the side of my work. When you reach the other stitch marker, you're going to simply chain one and turn your work around and begin with the second row of your sleeve. And for your second row, you're going to repeat the first, working on these 44 stitches, making a row of half double crochet. And for your third row, you're going to switch to the 10 millimeter crochet hook and continue with that larger hook. And you are going to continue like that until the end of row 16. So you have two rows already, 14 more rows of back and forth, back and forth, half double crochet, and I will meet you at the end of your 16th row. All right, time to switch from the 10 millimeter crochet hook to the six and a half millimeter crochet hook. We really want the sleeve to be puffy and for that we are just going to decrease and at the same time work with a smaller crochet hook. So you are at the end of your 16 row, take your six and a half crochet millimeter hook, chain one, turn your work around. We are going to go and make a round of decrease for your 17th row. So you're going to make two half double crochet together like we had done before, exactly the same way. So turning the two first stitches of your 17th row into one. And then making a half double crochet in the next stitch. And again, turn the two next stitches into one. 
making two half double crochet together and then half double crochet in the next stitch and you're going to do that all along your 17th row I will meet you at the end of your 17th row See how we are decreasing, creating the puffy sleeves. For your 18th row, you're going to chain one, turn your work around, and make a half double crochet in the first stitch, and then decreasing in the second and the third, turning the second and the third into one stitch. And repeat more, one half double crochet, and then decrease in the next two stitches, turning the next two stitches into one. And you're going to do that all along your 18th row. And I will meet you at the end of your 18th row. So decreasing and using a smaller crochet hook will create those puffy sleeves. And now time for the border. So you're going to chain three for that 19th row, turn your work around. Oh, the sky just opened up. And then you're going to decrease while making double crochet. So it's two double crochet together. I'll show you exactly how to do that. Super easy again. You're going to yarn over and go into the next stitch and pass your crochet hook through the stitch yarn over and back. You will have three loops on your crochet hook and then yarn over through two of the stitches on your crochet hook. Now yarn over and go to the next stitch. Pass it through the stitch, yarn over and back and yarn over and through two of the other loops on your crochet hook. Right now you have three loops on your crochet hook, you yarn over through all of the loops and just like that you turn two, two stitches into one with the double crochet decrease. Then in the next stitch make a regular double crochet and then again in the next two stitch turn those two stitches into one with a double crochet decrease just as I showed you before. And that is what you're going to do all along your 19th row. So we're creating the border and at the same time we are decreasing. We really want that steep decrease right there. You see how smaller your um, wrist is getting? We're creating the border part that will go around your wrist and it needs to be tiny, tiny. Just enough for you to pass your wrist to have that puffy effect. And for your 20th row, you're going to chain three, turn your work around. And for your last row of your wrist and your border for your sleeve, you're going to just go all along your last row and you are going to do so two double crochet together all along. So turning each two stitch into one all along. And that will be the last row of your sleeve. And when you're done with this row, you will fasten off. And I will show you how to assemble your sleeve together. You will repeat creating the same exact thing for the other sleeve. When you are done with both of the sleeves, it will be time to assemble and I will show you exactly how to do that. We are almost done. Here I'm showing you one side that is assembled and the other one that is not. So the right side is the way it will look before you assemble. Your sleeve will look like that, all the way wide at the top and super narrow at the bottom. And this is what you want. And the way we're going to assemble is first assemble the sleeve and then assemble the side of your work. All right, so this is what we're going to do right now. So I will show you how to assemble. I always assemble 
assemble with my crochet hook you can assemble with a tapestry needle just sewing if you would rather do that I use my crochet hook and I'll show you how I do it so I am beginning with the border of my sleeve so at the bottom of the sleeve I will fold my sleeve in half and I will begin at the side of the double crochet border I will match one side to the sleeve to the next closing it and I will pass my crochet hook which is my 8 millimeter crochet hook that I pass through both of the sides of the sleeve matching stitch to stitch then I take my yarn and wrap it around my crochet hook pass it through both of the stitch and chain one that is how I begin and then I pick up stitches all along the side of my sleeve trying to match both of the sides together stitch to stitch some people just pin their sleeve before assembling it with needles to make sure that they fit exactly I just don't do that I just go up my sleeve just like that with my crochet hook passing through to the side that is closer to you and the side that is further away from you and then yarn over and through both of the sides and I go all the way up the sleeve until I meet the end of the sleeve which will be where my two stitch markers were and then once I meet the bottom of my sleeve I assemble the sides and once you are done with that you will sew in all your loose tails and you are done my friends you created this beautiful Bernadette style vest I love it so much I've been wearing it since I made it I made it about a week ago and I have been wearing it non-stop I think I will make one in another color I love it so much and it is so versatile it's so light and fluffy exactly the way I like it I hope you will like it too I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and I am looking forward to create many more in the meantime happy crochet and see you next time bye this bag this bag but as usual i will take you but as usual i will take you i move a lot my hands today Ooh, i'm hot with this sweater and then the caron uh, latte oh yeah oh yeah so so la 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 Congrats. Congratulations. No. Ça va pas du tout.